We're spending the summer and fall exploring the Canadian Maritimes in Newfoundland. So far, we've explored all over New Brunswick, plus went tidal bore rafting in Nova Scotia. And after taking a quick break to hop back into the U.S. to ride 500 miles across our 50th state of Iowa, we're back in Canada. And this time, we're on Prince Edward Island, the smallest province in the country. Prince Edward Island is home to three different coastal drives. The North Cape Coastal Drive, Central Coastal Drive, and Points East Coastal Drive. And our goal this week is to road trip all around the island and experience all three. Since Prince Edward Island is an island, you might be wondering how you get to and from here. You can either take a ferry from Nova Scotia, fly into Charlottetown, or drive the Confederation Bridge from New Brunswick, which is what we did. This bridge is almost 13 kilometers long and goes over the Northumberland Strait. However, be warned, it has a pretty hefty price tag that shocked us a bit. Thankfully, the price is round trip though. But to kick off this road trip, we're heading to Charlottetown, the capital of the province and its largest city. Prince Edward Island is known as the birthplace of Confederation. Before 1867, the land that is now Canada was a handful of colonies controlled by Britain. However, on July 1st, 1867, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and the province of Canada, which today are Ontario and Quebec, joined together to be an independent country called the Dominion of Canada. And this date of Confederation became known as Canada Day, while Prince Edward Island didn't join the Dominion of Canada until a few years later. An important conference for Canadian Confederation occurred here in Charlottetown in 1864, and right here at Confederation Landing Park is where the Fathers of Confederation landed for the Charlottetown Conference. So even though it's the smallest province, it played a huge role in Canada's history. We just made a quick stop at Receiver Coffee Co, which is a local coffee roaster and cafe. And the location we went to is located in an old railway brass shop from the late 1800s, which is super cool. So now that we're caffeinated, let's go check out the city. We've been on Prince Edward Island for about a week now and we haven't explored much yet, but from what we've seen, everything here is just so quaint and charming and downtown Charlottetown is no exception. It is super walkable and there are tons of cool historic buildings and beautiful flowers everywhere. One of the most iconic sites of Charlottetown is the St. Dunstan's Basilica, which is a gorgeous Gothic cathedral that was built in the early 1900s. It is one of the most visible landmarks in the city and its spires are some of the highest points in the city's skyline. This is easily one of the most beautiful churches that we have ever been in. We were getting super hungry, so we stopped at the Founders Food Hall and Market, which is this really cool indoor market. They have 18 vendors total, and first we're checking out Dacha, which is French Caribbean soul food. So I got a boquite, <laughs> mine away, um, really <laughs> which is a food item from the French Caribbean island of Guadeloupe. We had never heard of Guadeloupe before this and we looked it up and it is absolutely beautiful and we looked at flight prices and they are absolutely 
very expensive, so we will not be going there anytime soon. So I'll just be enjoying it through the food instead. And a boquit is basically a fried bread pocket and you can get different fillings in there. So I got chicken and it also has tomato, lettuce, and a signature Creole sauce. And what's super cool is they make these boquits to order so they're hot and fresh. Mm, that is so good. Mm, that bread is super good. It's a little chewy and it's got that nice fried texture to it so it's nice and crispy on the outside but then nice and soft and dare I say it, the little bits here are a little pillowy on there. The chicken has so much spice on there. And I got their dachable, which has rice, beans, plantains, and then chicken with the same Creole sauce on it. Mmm, perfect mix of sweetness from the plantains and then the spiciness and just flavor of the chicken. Oh, that's tangy. I like that one. Ooh, I can feel, feel the heat coming in. Black bean and ginger. Are you looking for anything special? Mmm. Well, that's really good. It's a four out of six. Mm hmm. Yep, that one's spicier than the other one. <laughs> that's good, though. Oh. You have little shots of milk. I know, that's At the stand. Like, when you sell like those little cards. <laughs> yeah, or get a little ice cream. We've been eyeing this Maritime Madness hot sauce in all the grocery stores here, and so it's about time we picked one up, and we got the Garlic Goodness, which is a one out of six on their burn rate scale, because we are hot sauce weenies. I tried to be brave and try some of the spicier ones for samples, and I think I have heartburn now. So we wanted to get one that we know we'll enjoy, and it won't just like burn our bodies. We had to get a milk tea yeah. to cool us down a bit. Potatoes are a huge deal here on Prince Edward Island, and we'll tell you more about that tomorrow, but they have a stand here that sells potato fudge, so we obviously had to try it. And basically what they do is they puree the potato and they mix it with chocolate, and it makes a healthier fudge. It has less calories and less sugar, so you can eat it without feeling guilty. We've had potato donuts in Maine before, and they were a little bit different, but you really wouldn't have known it's a potato, so I'm so curious to see if I can tell this is potato. Mmm. Oh my gosh, it's so creamy. And smooth melts in your mouth yeah. and you would never know there's potatoes in here oh my gosh mm. regular fudge kind of has that kind of gritty texture to it where you can taste all the sugar you don't get that in this this is just super creamy like Catherine said just melts right in your mouth Dude, potato fudge for the win way better over regular fudge each one of these is only 20 calories. So this is only 120 calories for all this. Heck yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we did not forget about Kona. We got her a treat that says branch manager and it has a little stick on it. And Kona loves sticks, so this is very perfect for her. That's for me, I'll take that. Branch manager busy in the office. Performance review A+. Plus. We have a lot more of Prince Edward Island to see, so we're leaving Charlottetown and beginning our drive along the North Cape Coastal Drive. There are countless things to do along these coastal drives, including many beaches and lighthouses, but our goal for our road trip is to experience a variety of things. And for our first stop on the North Cape Coastal Drive, we're getting a little frozen sweet treat. Surprise, we had to get some ice cream. So Prince Edward Island is the headquarters of Cows, which is a very popular small ice cream chain. But we've actually had cows in Whistler before, so we wanted to try something different. So we came to a spot called Holman's Ice Cream Parlor instead. This is a local homemade ice cream shop that has a beautiful outdoor garden to sit in and flavors that change daily. And this week they're having an employee flavor showdown where employees have created some flavors. And I got a coconut base with a pomegranate swirl and then death by caramel, which is a caramel base and caramel bars inside and then a caramel swirl sauce. Oh my 
my gosh. Oh man, so creamy. Ice cream, let me get a bit of this, this milk bar. Mm. I heard that crunch. Yeah, that is very <laughs> crunchy. Oh, that's caramel flavor overload. Mm. This is a pretty flavor. I like the red swirl in there. Mm. I think I like that one even better. So if I had to vote on these two, I'm picking the coconut with the pomegranate swirl. I think there's little bits of coconut in there. Oh, so good. We're having an extreme melting situation on our hands here, but I got one called the Double Decker, which is vanilla ice cream that has a red color and then it has honeycomb in it. And it's supposed to be a tribute to Olivia, the creator's time in London. And then I also got the Death by Caramel. Mmm. Oh, that ice cream. Oh, and there's chocolate sauce. I forgot about that part. Oh gosh, it's dripping. Oh man, that's such a, uh, that's, mm, really good ice cream. <laughs> Oh gosh, I get so frantic when the ice cream's melting. Mmm, Olivia, fantastic job. All right, Luke, let's see how Death by Caramel is. Mmm. Oh. Luke. Luke. You did real good. Oh man, that's so good. Prince Edward Island has 61 lighthouses, which is said to be the highest concentration of any province or state in all of North America. And tonight we're gonna to be boondocking at the Cape Egmont Lighthouse, which came recommended to us from a couple different people to not only visit, but to free camp at as well. I think it's super interesting that many of the lighthouses here are square instead of the usual cylindrical shape you see. And we read that this is partially due to the fact that it was cheaper to build them this way. And this one is extra cool because it's painted like the Acadian flag. Try out our new hot sauce, or should I say mild sauce? Dinner is fire, thankfully not literally because we got the very mild sauce. This view is fire. Kona's on fire right now with excitement. Yeah, oh my gosh. Oh, what a good night. Kona, do you like our home for the night? It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Mosquitoes weren't bad when we were eating dinner outside and the sun oh gosh, was up. Oh gosh. But now that the sun has gone down, they are out in droves. Oh, and it's like a, it's like fireworks in here with this 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 I call it the the tennis racket, but it's like fireworks in here. Oh the my murder gosh. racket. The murder racket. Lots of murder happening. Oh God, there's one. Time to die. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no, no, bad idea, bad idea, <laughs> bad idea. The mosquitoes are bad. Okay. All right, buds, let's go learn about some spuds. <laughs> this is the world's largest potato sculpture.
Farms represent about 42% of the total land area of Prince Edward Island, and even though it's the smallest province in Canada, it's the largest potato-producing province. The red, iron-rich soil, warm summers, and cold winters provide the ideal growing conditions for potatoes. And there are over 100 varieties of PEI potatoes exported to over 20 countries. We made a quick stop at the Canadian Potato Museum where we got to learn some history about potatoes, see the many diseases that can impact them, check out different machinery, and so much more. Apparently the potato is a near-perfect food because it's a more complete protein than most food plants and has tons of vitamins, but I don't know if you serve it this way, how um, near-perfect it is. <laughs> I like it better this way, but all this butter, I don't know. We learned a lot about potatoes, and now I am very hungry for some potatoes, and we are gonna try some PEI potatoes in a bit, but first we're gonna head a little bit more north to the North Cape Hiking Trail. This trail is around five kilometers round trip, and one big benefit to hiking here on Prince Edward Island is that basically all the trails are flat. This view is incredible, and just off in the distance over there are four or five seals just hanging out in the water. How cool! This trail had tons of beautiful coastal views, but our favorite part are these windmills. This trail is located right next to the Wind Energy Institute of Canada and there's about 20 or 30 of these giant windmills and they are whipping through the air. Like they are spinning so fast. You can just hear the blades like cutting through the air. It almost sounds like a jet soaring through the air. It is literally awesome to watch. I'm just like watching how fast they're going in my mouth. I'm like, oh my gosh, wow. Like <laughs> it's crazy. I've never seen them go so fast and so loud. They also have some of the components laying down on the ground by the parking area, including a blade and then the thing that the blade attaches to, I don't know all the windmill terminology, and it looks big as we're standing underneath one right now, but it looks way bigger when it's just right next to you. It's just absolutely massive. We came to Backwoods Burger to not only get a burger, which is delicious, but more importantly, to get some fries. Not just regular french fries, though. We got a special Prince Edward Island dish called Fries with the Works. So Fries with the Works is basically like a twist on poutine. It's fries with gravy and beef and peas and some fried onions here. And it doesn't traditionally come with cheese curds, but, you know, cheese curds takes everything up a notch, so we had to add some of those. I'll give it a shot without the cheese curds first to get that traditional bite. All right, we gotta get a little bit of everything on here. Get some peas, get some onions. Oh, no, get out of there, cheese curd. It looks really hot. Oh, yes. I'm not sure what it is. I actually eat it. Oh my god, that's so good. Mm. That gravy is nice and saucy and savory. Huge chunks of beef in here. I like the peas in there. I never know how to describe them, but they add some kind of flavor. <laughs> and then the potatoes, they are nice and crispy, but then the ones that are covered in the gravy are just mm, so good. It almost kind of tastes like a beef stew on fries. Mm. Get some cheese curds in there. Mm. Cheese curds is the way to go. Oh man. They're a little squeaky too, cheese curds. Add it to everything, just put it on everything. Also yesterday we picked up these cow's chips, which are chocolate covered potato chips. They're very popular on the island and they are very, very delicious. 
Well, I shouldn't have taken it all at once. Hold on. I underestimated how large that chip was, but man, they're just like the perfect mix of sweet and salty and crunchy. Mmm. Yeah, hello, I love. We have made it back onto the Central Coastal Drive, which is a drive that we started on yesterday in Charlottetown, but we're now on the northern side of it. And we just stopped at this overlook of French River and it may be the most beautiful part of the island that we've seen so far. There's this gorgeous mix of water and rolling hills and farmland in the distance, tons of cute buildings and the flowers are just blowing in the wind. It is picture perfect. But now we're off to our campsite at Cabot Beach Provincial Park for the night and tomorrow the road trip continues. We woke up this morning to pouring rain and wind rocking the van and it took us a few hours to get up and muster the energy to get going but we are back on the road and we're going to continue this road trip. Our plan for today is to explore part of Prince Edward Island National Park. This park is located on the northern shore of Prince Edward Island and is broken into three regions which are separated by bays and not directly connected by highways. Despite this less than ideal weather we're going to try to power through and first we're heading to Cavendish Beach for a very nice beach day. All right, we made it and it's still raining, but we're gonna try, <laughs> the wind's blowing the umbrella away. <laughs> we're, oh no, oh no. We're gonna try to check out the beach really, really quick. So this is Prince Edward Island's most well-known beach and we'll show you a stock photo of what it's supposed to look like. But this is what we're working with, this crazy weather here and we weren't very excited about it but now that we're down here and actually seeing it, you know this weather provides kind of a unique, I guess, you know, experience and it's kind of made it even fun. Yeah, it's actually been pretty fun and this beach is beautiful. Yeah. There's all these dunes around it. It's a gorgeous beach, even on a not so gorgeous day but yeah the waves are roaring yeah the waves and the crazy wind and just the grass blowing on the dunes it just kind of it's beautiful in its own way i guess oh no we're gonna fly away <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Besides the National Park, this area is famous for being where Anne of Green Gables takes place. In fact, they call it the Green Gables Shore. If you're unfamiliar with Anne of Green Gables, this is a series of books from the early 1900s and is about a young orphan girl named Anne who mistakenly was delivered to a couple here on Prince Edward Island. And it is all the rage here. There's a chocolate shop, an Anne of Green Gables soda, and you can see her house. We even heard that there's a question on the Canadian citizens test about Anne of Green Gables. However, we have not read Anne of Green Gables, so we don't personally have any interest in stopping at any of the sites. I can just hear all the Anne of Green Gables fans yelling at their screens right now. Go easy on us, no, no, no. Don't hurt us, don't, don't, don't hurt us. us. <laughs> But if you're a fan, definitely go check it out. It would actually be a pretty solid rainy day activity. But for us, we're gonna do something else that's pretty good to do on a rainy day. We're gonna eat another PEI treat. It rhymes. <laughs> Oh, 
Potatoes aren't the only thing they grow here on Prince Edward Island. They also grow berries, including raspberries. And we heard that a must try item while here on the island is raspberry cream cheese pie. So we came to Prince Edward Island Preserve Company to grab a slice. This is a two layer pie with the bottom layer being a cheesecake like custard consistency and the top layer is a raspberry pie filling topped with whipped cream. Oh my God, heck yeah. Oh, that custard cheesecake thing is so creamy and the, the raspberry preserves is so tart. And then when you mix them all together, it's like perfect tart and creamy bite. I really like that they're separated like that because you get a lot of both in each bite. And then the crust is also super good. I gotta steal some of the whipped cream because that's my favorite part. They asked if we wanted whipped cream and I was like, heck yeah. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Oh yeah, the raspberry is nice and tart. It also has the seeds in it. So you get a little bit of crunchiness too. It's kind of like, a creamsicle. Oh my gosh. We should have gotten two slices. <laughs> I don't want to share it. We have made it onto our final coastal drive, the Points East Coastal Drive. And we've actually headed back to Prince Edward Island National Park, but this time the Greenwich area. This area is home to the largest dunes on the island. And to experience them, we're going to hike the Greenwich Dunes Trail. This trail has had a variety of landscapes. You first start in the forest and then you walk across this large pond on a floating walkway with the gorgeous dunes on your left and then you end at the beach. Today is our final day on Prince Edward Island and we're continuing our road trip on the Points East Coastal Drive and first up we're heading to Basin Head Provincial Park. We have been to a couple different beaches but what makes this one unique is that apparently when you walk on the sand, the sand sings. So let's go try it out. Very curious as to what this is gonna sound like. I don't hear anything. You hear it, do you? Do you? Yeah. Don't stop believing. Oh my gosh, it's journey sand. So the reason that the sand sings is due to a high silica count. And so I was doing some research because everyone says it sings, but we cannot get it to sing. And apparently, all these articles say in dry sand, and all the sand's pretty wet. It's been really rainy, so. We're on the hunt to hopefully find some dry sand and make some music. I think we've been duped on a little local urban legend. I don't hear anything. If you've been able to get the sands to sing, let us know below what it sounds like so we can experience it through you. But even though we could not get the sands to sing, this is probably the most beautiful beach that we have been to on Prince Edward Island. It has this gorgeous, soft, just golden white sand and the water is so clear. And then when the sun popped out for a second and reflected onto the water, the water was so blue. Out of the 61 lighthouses on the island, there are only a handful of them that you can go inside of, and the East Point Lighthouse is one of them. So this is actually the second tallest lighthouse on Prince Edward Island, and the third oldest. There's a ladder to get the rest of the way. This lighthouse is a little different. Usually when you climb up to the top, you're on the outside here, 
and you can't get into the light room. This one, you're in the room with the light, you can't get out to the, to the walkway outside. We have a bit of a drive to our final stop on Prince Edward Island. So we're making a quick stop in the town of Surrey, which we actually visited last week and we really enjoyed it. We just popped into an amazing cafe called Evergreen Cafe to get some coffee and some lunch. It's like a Taco Bell crunch wrap. Mm, but way better. And we're now walking on this boardwalk that they have right along the beach, which is super nice. When we were here the other day, the weather was gnarly. The wind was howling through here, like 20, 30 mile an hour winds. There were huge waves like crashing into the rocks over there and like spraying water over. It was pretty crazy. Apparently there's a lot of sea glass on this beach and I see a bunch of people hunched over digging in the sand. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find some. Wow. Cool. I didn't really know what I was doing or what I was even looking for. So I just found where the most people were bent down and picking up things. And look how cool these are. They're so green and so smooth. That's not the only glass we're gonna experience on this island-wide road trip. For our last stop, we're gonna head about an hour away to Hannah's Bottle Village. Hannah's Bottle Village is a village with buildings and structures all made out of bottles and there is another bottle village on the west side of the island but what makes this one very special is that it's donation based and all of the donations go to a children's hospital. The owner and creator's goal is to get $100,000 in donations in his lifetime and just a couple days ago they crossed $97,000 so just a little bit left to go. I just love when people take something that others may throw away and turn it into art. This place is so cool. There are so many bottles here. Apparently there are over 30,000 and in just this room, there's over 4,200. I just love the way that the light from outside is illuminating all of the bottles. It almost looks like they have light bulbs inside. With unique sites like this, plus rolling farmland, tons of beaches, lighthouses, and quaint towns, Prince Edward Island feels a bit like you're wandering around a storybook. The relaxing and slower pace of life here was just what we needed, but it's time for some bigger adventures to begin again. And next up, we're off to the province in Canada that we've been most excited to visit this year for a late summer full of fjords, epic hikes, crazy scenery, and so much more.